Hey everyone, thank you all for signing up in such large quantities. We feel honored that you're taking the time to hear about our trend musings. My name is Eric Smet, Content Director at Trend Watching, and it's my pleasure to take you on a trend journey today. I'm excited to see that well over a thousand of you have decided to join us today from all over the world. I'm coming to you live from our Amsterdam office today, joined by colleagues from all over. Some are working alongside me behind the scenes. You can't see them, but I definitely can. And some are lurking in the webinar chat from afar. They are here to answer any questions that you might have throughout this webinar. So don't hesitate to reach out to them and ask anything that comes to mind. They are here to answer. If we can't get back to you while the webinar is running, we'll make sure to get back to you after the webinar has ended. Uh, my email address is eric at trendwatching.com. So make sure to reach out to me if you have any questions before, during, or after. But for now, my colleagues will be at your service should you have any questions about the content I'm about to present to you. As some of you may have noticed, our 2024 trend check went live towards the tail end of last year. The publication features 15 distinct industry trends accompanied by a set of cross-industry innovations, insights, and opportunities. If you haven't read it yet, no worries. Just know that the contents of what you're about to see builds on that trend check. Um, we've made a selection of three trends out of 15, so there's a vast amount of other trend knowledge for you to absorb after this webinar is over. And about that, for starters, I will kick off this webinar by talking about the expectation economy, which we have preached to be your guiding light to funnel your innovation. Closely followed by a new type of economy that is emerging. And after that, we'll get to the really good stuff and discuss three cross-industry opportunities being factual healing, green theater, and drafted by AI. But we won't just stop there, as we have some trend goodies for you to help you continue your trend journey way past this webinar too. And what is a trend check without a little trend quiz to check your future readiness? Throughout this presentation, a couple of these question blocks will appear. When one of them pops up, it means I'm about to ask you a question and you will have a couple of seconds to write down an answer for yourself. So make sure to either have your notes app ready or just keep the answers in your mind. I will reiterate the questions at the end, um, but I won't give the answers throughout the webinar. So you have to stick out till the end to see if your answers were the correct ones. So let's dive in into the actual content and kick things off by discussing the expectation economy. Our clients and longtime followers have definitely heard us talk about it before. But what it comes down to is that consumer expectations transfer across industries, regions, and price points. This means that you're not just competing with brands from within your industry, but with any type of brand, regardless of industry or region. For instance, let's consider OpenAI and their generative AI products, ChatGPT and DALI. As a result of the prompt revolution that has ensued since GPT's inception, new expectations around personalization and convenience have emerged. From highly personalized web browser Arc that lets you design your web environment as you see fit, to H&M's latest tool that allows anyone to become a fashion designer with the use of a few simple prompts. Generative AI is also no longer limited to software either. Meet Rabbit, the latest gen AI device launched at CES just a little over two weeks ago. It is basically an AI-driven Tamagotchi, but instead of having to take care of it, it takes care of you, at least in some ways. You can have it suggest recipes based on what's in your fridge, ask it to play music from your app's phone, or ask it to clean up Excel files. In conclusion, when every brand is a competitor, the bar is set high continuously pushing consumer expectations to new heights, which makes setting expectations rather challenging. Which brings me to my first question that relates to this expectation economy that you've heard me rambling on about. When exactly was the term expectation and economy first coined? Was it A, in 2008, B, in 2012, or C, in 2018? Going to give you five, four, three, Right, let's pick up the pace. Safe to say we've been talking about consumer expectations and how to set them for a while. 
we've talked about this expectation economy as a guiding light, as I said, to inspire your innovation pipeline. However, viewing everyone as a competitor seems rather on purpose nowadays, especially coming from a purpose trend firm like Trendwatching. Of course, the reason we promote cross-industry thinking isn't just to beat competitors, it's to learn how others are setting new consumer expectations. And when it comes to those expectations, we consider expectations around purpose business to be the most important. Because the majority of consumers globally are concerned about growing social tension. They believe their countries are headed in the wrong direction and they feel guilty about their environmental impact. Having said that, it would of course be silly to claim that expectations around convenience, bargains, and st status in the traditional sense no longer exist. Um, Greenland is now exporting glacier ice to the UAE, ouch, and airlines are still hitting record high revenues, and people seem to go ham over the Stanley Cup in the US. Um, however, just because there is a market for something doesn't mean you should necessarily enter and exploit it. And for those who don't know it, the Stanley Cup is a simple water bottle with over 100 different types of variants, some more rare than others, and grown-ups are going crazy in their collections, trying to get the rarest one. Just to be clear, we're not telling you not to listen to consumers anymore, but instead to be mindful of what expectations you actually want to set, because what you pay attention to grows. Will you help push expectations around hyper-consumerism, or will you cultivate expectations around business doing better? I think you can guess what we are vouching for, obviously the latter. Um, but this, it is a bit of a departure from the expectation economy as we first coined it all those years ago. Because since then, a pandemic, countless climate-related disasters and deepening geopolitical tensions have and will continue to alter the consumer landscape. So whereas before we encouraged brands to view everyone as a potential competitor, um, hope you enjoyed this AI-generated image, by the way. Now, the exchange economy has you looking at other brands and industries as a source of inspiration. Because the world's largest challenges require cross-industry approach to solving them. Let me illustrate what I mean by that. So let's have a look at a problem within the healthcare industry, a shortage of healthcare workers. This isn't something um, that the health industry can fix on its own especially considering the shortage is expected to increase over the course of this decade. And as a result of that, the gap between supply and demand will continue to widen, which is evidenced by only 12% of consumers globally saying their well-being is where it should be. And because care demands continue to outweigh supply, consumers now look elsewhere to optimize their well-being. With 77% of consumers expecting the food and beverage industry to provide health benefits, closely followed by tech, retail, and finance. So you can see how a specific industry challenge is now causing cross-industry or leading to cross-industry opportunity. Which brings me to the next question, which is what percentage of consumers expect the fashion industry to play a significant role in making sure that they are as healthy as possible? Is it A, 57%, B, 49%, or C, 34%? Again, going to give you five, four, three. Let's continue. So, all right, let's have a look at a couple of cross industry innovators that are already providing next level health benefits to consumers. Now, you've heard about low calorie food, you've heard about superfoods, vitamin infused everything, but have you heard about life extending meals? Well, that is exactly what Blue Zones offer. A food startup named after the ge geographic areas that have lower rates of chronic diseases and longer life expectancy. The brand provides recipes, cooking classes, and frozen plant-based meals inspired by the food from those regions, promising to help consumers live better and longer. Quite literally food for thoughts and also food for health. Some retailers are aiming for a different type of approach. This is an activation by the supermarket chain Morrison's and the UK's NHS. And they have teamed up to boost cancer awareness by adding specific labels to some of its underwear. Each label includes a QR code that links to comprehensive information about the symptoms of breast and testicular cancer. So the cross-industry opportunity here is to increase awareness of symptoms, 
and encourage people to seek appropriate care in a way that makes sense to your brand identity, whether that relates to physical or mental health. And really, any brand, and I truly mean that, can partake in providing brand care, which is what we call this trend especially looking at the list of issues that consumers perceive to negatively impact their health. Um, what may come as a surprise is that inflation is one of the top concerns. Money does, in fact, matter in multiple ways. Incomes pay nearby. An Indian digital bank who's launched in own radio platform. So the station delivers snackable content with topics ranging from income augmentation to personal health and well-being. And what's great about this initiative is that it seamlessly integrates info um, retailers' daily routines, making learning about financial and personal health a low effort affair. So from life extending food to potentially life-saving apparel, and from financial healing to these Tokyo-based sleep cafe pods, what happens when every brand is expected to become a healthcare brand as a result of healthcare shortages? And that's how we get from an industry-specific challenge to a cross-industry opportunity. Now that we've walked you through the process, let's explore three more. Starting with a trend that has really started within the realm of social media. So myths and disinformation has been a problem for a while now, yet it has become a bigger problem ever since the emergence of generative AI. Experts warn about the dangers of misinformation during the upcoming elections around the world, while research by the World Health Organization shows that misinformation negatively impacts people's health behavior. Social media is playing a big part in the dissemination of fake news, as nearly one of, out of five videos automatically suggested by TikTok contain misinformation, while fake news travels six times faster than true stories. And as a result, 88% of consumers globally call for governmental and regulatory intervention, with a similar number demanding proactive measures from social media platforms. And while this seems like a social media and regulatory problem first, it's important to consider that the social media sector is currently the least trusted industry by a long shot. So this again opens up the door for cross-industry solutions to help people discern fact from fiction. Which brings me to the first trend. So as governments tighten AI laws and social platforms loosen content filters, brands have a new lane, which is spearheading community-driven moderation to build trust in the age of misinformation. So smart strategies in this sense, like content labeling, expert fact checks, proactive moderation, can become part of a brand's toolkit ensuring credible information that really stands out. And that is what factual healing is all about. And Google is doing just that. So in October from last year, they introduced new features to help people fact check. The features provide information on images history and what context an image has been used in before. Additionally, a separate tool called the Search Generative Experience allows users to easily generate a list of additional sources that discuss the topic that they've been reading about, making it easier to triangulate, aka checking news topics across various sources. And these types of initiatives are important, as a large majority of consumers have doubts about their ability to tell if images are actually authentic. But who says truth-seeking should be its own reward? Can you explore ways to incentivize this type of behavior of people seeking out the truth? SwiftX is doing that by rewarding participants for learning about crypto scams. So the exchange platforms earn and learn activation um, challenges participants to partake in its webinar series. And in return of completing it, they receive a $5 Australian um, a reward in terms of Bitcoin for completing the first set. And history has shown that where verified advice is slow and absent, uh, COVID anyone, it leaves space for misinformation and disinformation to grow quickly. And in a volatile market like crypto, discerning fact from fiction is therefore essential, especially knowing that fake news can travel six times faster than the truth, as we've just learned. So helping consumers fact check is and will remain important. 
but helping them turn that knowledge into resilience is an important next step. So let's have a look at a couple of insights from our 2024 trend report that indicate how some brands are doing just that. So Peruvian beer brand Pilsen Calao and the BCP partnered to create a digital platform to promote financial literacy. The platform combines financial knowledge and saving tips, games and prizes with the intent of helping consumers realize their financial goals with the end goal of building financial literacy and setting them up for life essentially. And when it comes to climate resilience, Climate Fresk is making ways with its global workshops. So the nonprofit hosts workshops that explore the cause of climate change to adults via in-person and online sessions. And during these facilitated workshops, based on reports from the IPCC, participants are given 42 distinct cards that present the causes and consequences of climate change and are then tasked of making a match. The goal is for attendees to then take action and start building solutions after understanding the core challenges of the climate transition. Since its launch, the workshops have been translated to over 40 different languages and have been held in over 150 different countries. Which leads me to my next question, which is, how many participants has Climate Fresk reached out to so far? Is it A, 700,000, B, 1.4 million, or C, 4.3 million. Again, A, 700,000, B, 1.4 million, or C, 4.3 million. I'm gonna give you five, four, three. So let's move on to the next one. Um, so for our first trend conclusion, for the first trend, I want to share a takeout from our 2024 trend report called Life Literacy. Because as these previous two innovations allude to, consumers will look to coping strategies that put them back in the driver's seat. In 2024 and beyond, they'll seek out practical know-how that gives them the resilience required to thrive during periods of turbulence. How will you help them regain a sense of control by instilling the necessary life skills and help them build the life resilience that I just mentioned? This is not an official question, so I'll move along. On to trend number two, because on the topic of truth seeking behavior, there is an obvious econ component to it too. As seven out of 10 consumers worldwide would turn away from brands confronted with greenwashing allegations. And generally it's safe to say that retailers haven't built the best reputation when it comes to eco claims. With the EU having to step in and put a ban on climate neutral claims, and even the most purpose retailers like Patagonia being called out for deeply unethical behavior. As a result, consumer trust in corporate sustainability claims has dwindled and has dropped by over more than half in the past two years alone. So instead of abstract eco claims, investigate how you can make your green initiatives tangible and clearly impactful. Mind you, this trend isn't an opportunity to shift the responsibility of sustainability and being green onto consumers via in-store repair centers and waste reduction initiatives, even though those do remain important. But it's really about making consumers part of your ongoing sustainability journey and turning your sustainability roadmap into a joint eco road trip. This caters to the 72% of consumers who would like more information on how companies are making their products better for the environment. Which brings me to our second trend. Pioneering retailers are building eco-trust by creating an entertaining physical shopping experience that is centered around their sustainability goals and really tagging consumers along for the ride, as we just alluded to. So with the future of physical retail still under discussion, giving shoppers a front row sheet to your green theater could give your brand the edge. So let's dive in to a couple of innovators. Department store Selfridges and shoe brand Albers did just that, create a green theater with their carbon concept store. As carbon remains quite an abstract metric to many, like what does a kilogram of carbon look like? The store highlighted the carbon footprint of different pairs of shoes with black spheres, the ones that you see on the image here, providing a clear visual representation of their respective impact. Now, Alberts has been pioneering the sustainability movement in their niche for years now, as they started adding carbon labels to their products nearly four years ago, as well as launching an open source tool to help others calculate their carbon footprint as well in 2021. 
But of course, the trend expands far beyond retail, as there are various ways for you to put your products and services sustainability on display too. Imagine your wine bottle only half full, which in this case really is half empty. That's exactly what you'll get from Ampersand Estates bottles. The collection is a visual nudge about climate change's impact on its vineyards. And additionally, this bottle comes with a chance to act, offering buyers um, a conservation agreement to protect land, including precious grape growing regions. So it's a double sustainability initiative, if you will. It both makes their actions clearly impactful on the packaging, but it also invites consumers to join in for the ride. Now, we're staying down under for just a little while longer. The previous innovation was from Australia too. So Honest Ag Co. launched the world's first fitness track designed for chickens. Yes, you heard that right. The ergonomic fitness trackers don't disrupt the chicken's day-to-day -day activities, while the device measures step counts. The average across the farm is then printed on the X and sold in Australian supermarkets. I promise this isn't an April Fool's joke. I have the video to prove it. Free range, open range, cage free eggs. It's all a bit, yeah, a bit confusing. So we're going to make it a whole lot easier. Here at Honest Eggs Co, we're all about regenerative egg farming. You see, every week we move our laying sheds to fresh pastures giving our chooks an endless supply of grass and bugs to eat, plus heaps of room to move. To monitor how free and healthy our chooks are, we invented the world's first step counter designed for a chicken. Introducing... Fit Chicks. Made from hen-friendly materials with a camouflage design, the device fits seamlessly onto the chicken, so they can do what they do best, roam freely around our farm. Using customised software and GPS tracking, the device counts the steps of the chicken. We then print the chicken step count onto the eggs so you can see how free and healthy they really are. Over 4,000 steps? Not bad, Henrietta. So next time you go buy some eggs, go for the honest ones. Better get my steps in. So this is, of course, a clear example of how to put your sustainability activations front and center. Now, for those of you who are curious, you can also log on to Strava, the fitness tracking app, and see and track the chickens of the farm with your own eyes. So when implementing or while implementing elements of green theater and putting your sustainability on display can already be quite challenging. We did want to take it one step further for this trend and look ahead as well. Again, drawing from the trend insights from our 2024 report. So these next few innovations go beyond tangible sustainability campaigns, but attempt to immerse consumers into the nature they're trying to preserve. Apologies for showing you two videos back to back, but I didn't want to withhold this one from you. So as you just witnessed, it's um, a melodic billboard by Indian tea brand Taj Mahal Tea by Unilever. The installation turns into a musical instrument during the monsoon season as the rainfall activates the billboard's strings. The song that plays is a classical Indian tune that traditionally played to celebrate rainfall. And what type of similar activations can you think of to help consumers feel connected to nature, regardless of their environment? Because this was, of course, launched in an urban environment. But this emergence in, in, in nature doesn't have to take place outdoors. It can happen at any single store corner. So Dove and Singaporean NGO Rima Collective launched the Nature Regeneration Project in July from last year. The main goal of the collaboration is to restore 123,000 acres of rainforest over the next five years. To bring the project to life and let it resonate with consumers, Dove partnered up with Walmart as well to launch an AR experience via QR code. So once scanned, the rainforest that Dove and Rimba are trying to preserve and restore 
appeared right in front of people's eyes through their smartphone screens, attempting to feign a sense of eco immersion. So both this AR experience and the interactive billboard link to Allscapes, one of our 2024 trend report opportunities. This trend details how and why people are currently looking to level up their well-being and seek to cultivate a sense of awe. Because embodying this sense of vastness, R can contribute to fulfillment, to reduce loneliness, and create a sense of belonging. How and when will you inspire all? Because some niche, niche expectation this is not. Or is it? I'll leave it up to you to decide. So what percentage of consumers globally say that they want more all in their lives? Is it A, 18%? B, 27% or C, 49%. I'm again going to give you a couple of seconds before we move on. In three, two, one. On to already our last trend opportunity of the day. But we saved the best for last. At least I think so. So do you remember this bit? Well, it seems like the do-good workforce is declining in other industries as well. Because 74% of US nonprofits reported job vacancies, while 7 in 10 are bracing themselves for a decline or stagnation in charitable giving, which suggests there could be fewer funds to pay NGO workers in the near future. Could AI potentially help bridge the gap, at least partially? This new initiative by Just Giving suggests that it just might. The Giving Platform recently introduced a Story Enhancer, which is a generative AI tool that helps fundraisers create and share personalized stories. According to the research by the company, many find it challenging to create and share personalized stories while fundraising. But pages um, that include a personal narrative generally net 65% more funding. So the reason to doing it is there. And this is an example of generative AI being used to amplify do-good power, which is something that is not only relevant to the NGO industry, of course. As consumers globally agree that technology can make a huge difference and make the world a better place, or even bring people together, which I think is something that we just might need. Which brings me to our third trend, drafted by AI, which details how new age tech is supercharging do-good initiatives, so let's have a look at a couple of innovators that are already paving the way, starting off with a social media platform, Pinterest. After noticing a near 50% year-on-year increase in body type searches, the social media company implemented a new type of AI technology to ensure search results include various body types and skin tones, without specifically looking for terms such as curvy or other skin tone related content. Which brings us to the final question of today. I would like to ask you, which region do you think Pinterest feature was rolled out in first? Was it A, in the Asia Pacific region, B, in Europe, or C, in North America? Again, going to give you a couple of seconds to answer, but we'll continue in five, four, three. So it's safe to say, that generative AI is seeping in all corners of consumerism, including finding our way into our living rooms. As IKEA recently developed three potential future scenarios for the next decade, including an algae wallpaper that can generate electricity from sunlight. Additionally, also 3D printed chairs made from mushroom compounds. Each scenario helps imagine a what if scenario as a result of the climate crisis and technological developments. I've mentioned the shortage among healthcare workers twice now, but generative AI could provide valuable um, opportunities here as well. So Peruvian health startup Huli uses generative AI to centralize patient data into one app and platform. This makes it easier for medical staff to share medical information with insurance providers, pharmacies, and also with patients themselves. This not just fosters simplicity regarding patient care, but also accelerates information sharing and simplifies it in the process too. Similarly, how might you optimize internal processes leveraging AI to increase consumer benefits in the end? 
A more consumer-facing example is this one by Vital, which is a digital health company from the US. To simplify doctor-to-patient communication, they have developed an AI tool that translates magic, medical, not magical, <laughs> jargon. The main goal is for the technology to reduce patients' stress levels and minimize health risks that might arise from misunderstandings. And as of August 2023, the translator is now free for public use on the company's website. So do check it out if you want to have a look. We also have a what's next section for our final trend of the day. Again, one that references our annual report. A trend that takes AI's do-good potential to the next level. Around 500,000 individuals in Germany do not identify with their assigned gender, which sometimes can make looking back at childhood photos difficult and sometimes even painful. So the Saved Memories project addressed this issue by transforming their childhood photos into um, the, the, the gender that they are identifying with using AI. So the project emphasizes the importance of allowing individuals to be seen and accept it for who they truly are, without attempting to change the past, but rather aligning the images with their authentic identity. The campaign has reached over 165 million people over the course of last year, just to show its impact. And additionally, advertising agency Area 23 has created um, a biography through AI, which records life stories of Alzheimer's patients. So doctors send patients a link to a questionnaire in which they're asked about their lives. The answers are then used as input for a large language model to create a biography that can be shared as a physical or audio book. Easy does it. So the tool has been in development since 2019, but was deployed in clinical trial in Brazil towards the end of last year, with further rollout across the country scheduled for this year. Which brings me to the third trend report opportunity. So, as generative AI power tools help users rewrite existing narratives and imagine alternative scenarios, consumers are increasingly empowered to take back ownership of their past, of their present, and also of their future. And while this is very much a people-powered movement, there is space for brands to amplify these new narratives and work with individuals to help turn their thoughts into reality. So that begs the question, what stories will you help to write and how? So that concludes our three trends. Just to briefly summarize, we've talked about factual healing, which detailed how brands can stand up against myths and disinformation. We've discussed green theater, about how physical spaces, products, and services can be used as a vessel to put your sustainability efforts on display, and drafted by AI, about how generative AI can be leveraged to maximize do good potential. And now, the exciting bit, um, I wish I had some special effects, some drum rolls, <laughs> but you're just going to have to imagine them. The part you've all been waiting for, the review of the right answers, the review of your scores. I will give you a couple of seconds to fact check. Question one was when we coined the expectation economy, which was in 2008. Question two revolved around the fashion industry and how many consumers expect the fashion industry to play a significant role in making sure that they are as healthy as possible. The correct answer was 49% B. Question three was about the sustainability workshops and how many people had participated in them. The correct answer was B, 1.4 million. And question four was 49% again, which was not a typo. Uh, and it revolved around how many people actively are looking for all in their lives. And last but not least, the final question about uh, Pinterest. They actually rolled out the feature um, across all three. So you were right regardless of your pick. We're all winners here. If you scored one point, I highly recommend for you to check out the trend check publication I mentioned all the way in the beginning. It covers 15 industry specific trends with plenty of cross industry opportunities. Truly a great way to kick off your 2024 trend thinking. If you scored two or three points, I'd recommend for you to re revisit our 27 makeshift editions, packed with of the moment trends, insights, and innovations. You will probably um, have a difficult time scrolling all the way to the bottom of the page, similar to what I was trying to do when recording this video. And then finally, for the trend nerds among us who have scored four or five points, 
I would recommend that you check out Amplify, our trend intelligence platform. On it, you will find our mega trend framework, over 180 subtrends, countless of industry reports, and over 28,000 innovations, as well as our pièce de résistance, the 2024 trend report. And the good news is you can all get a 40-day trial now. So when you scan the link on screen, the QR code, it will take you to the trial signup page and it will give you 14 days of free access. Additionally, if you're joining us from your phone, my colleagues are currently uploading the Amplify trial link into the chat so you can have a look there. If all else fails, we are also sending you an email tomorrow with all of the files that you could possibly need, including a link to the three to the two publications that I've mentioned just now, the trend check and makeshift, as well as the PDF version of my deck, and of course the link to your Amplify trial. Additionally, I know my colleagues have been hard at work to answer all of your questions, but should any remain, you can find the link to my email address. Um, as a hover over of the screen as well. So if there are any questions that are lingering, I do really encourage you to reach out to me as I would love to remain in touch. Having said that, unfortunately, that is all that I have for you today. It was a joy to talk to you today and I hope that our journey continues way past this webinar. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining. We truly appreciate it and see you soon. Goodbye.